Uh, welcome back to Florida Man Review. I'm your host, Big Juicy, fellow Florida man. And we're back! We're back in Florida, which is huge. The last one we had to do in Australia, yeah, it didn't feel right. You know, we're gonna have to do them here and there, but we're in Florida and I'm sweating from every orifice in my body. Let's take a look at February of 2024 in this month's Florida Man Review. February 1st, a plane crashed into a clear water home, an absolutely tragic event where three people's lives were lost. Starting off heavy, but luckily on the scene was Joseph Salvador Schifano. He crosses the funny yellow police barrier, uh, claiming that he's medical staff. When asked to provide any sort of details at all, he simply can't provide any that prove that he's anything other than Joe. Obviously, he was told to leave, and he said, ah, sorry, I'm just a nosy, nosy, goofy little fella, that's it. A reminder, this is a plane that literally crashed into to somebody's house. So Joseph walked away. Problem solved. But literally moments later, in the distance, the police see somebody crossing under the police tape, allegedly, with his phone out. Surprise, by the way, it's Joseph. When caught, he said that he was filming it so that he could maybe sell it to a media company. Like he's working for freaking J. Jonah Jameson or something. For like he's freaking Spider-Man. Shifano is facing charges of resisting an officer without arrest. And much funnier news, February 2nd. HB 49 has passed. What the fuck does that mean? What is an HB 49? Child labor has never been so back. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think that minors should do more labor? So does Florida. Work hour restrictions while school is in session are gone, done. You wanna work full time? Go for it. You wanna work 40 hours on the job site after school? Go for it. Do you wanna stock shelves at Big Lot? Full time, go for it. Finally, these lazy ass kids can get a big boy job. Remember though, the fight is not over until toddlers are building our electronics. They have tiny hands, remarkable at manipulating small electronics and building circuit boards and shit. February 5th, the Coral Springs Police Department responded to reports of a man threatening people with a weapon. Typical day. Samuel Dirio is under arrest after making one of the hardest threats I have ever heard made towards another single human being, let alone one with a leaf blower strapped to his back. After a heated exchange, Dirio brandished a machete and he said, I will cut you into pieces. And I quote, I will cut you up today. But that's not the kicker. When police detained Dirio, he told them, he emphasized, he expanded on the conversation that he had, the heated one, with the people while he brandished a machete. And he said, yeah, I did say that. But also I said this, I'm gonna kill them and quote, eat their bodies. Bit of a weird thing to confess to the police. I can't imagine just like weed whacking someone's lawn and then turning around to a guy with a machete saying he's gonna eat my body. That's insane. Really threatening to eat anybody's body is freaking insane. While Dirio was fantasizing about a landscaper sandwich, this bozo was booked into the Palm Beach County Police Sheriff's Office thing for calling the police like a billion times. A firefighter who had to respond to like most of these calls had, I believe, made the complaint. Not 100% on that, can't really fact check that. He had made the complaint because this kid had called the police and had them take him to the hospital six times in two days, two days. Like, what's the point here? Where's the funny? Like, it's, it's just an inside joke with him and his friends? I don't get it. Where's... According to a nurse at one of those hospitals, Ferrer uses booger sugar and other drugs that make him paranoid, and then he just keeps coming in like, hey, I'm dying. And they're like, you're not dying. You just took an Adderall. This is alleged, but if true, he is just stuck in some ferocious cycle of like taking drugs and then thinking he's dying and going to the hospital and calling the paramedics every single time. Now, I'm gonna say something very, very controversial. You can think what you want about it. Maybe he just sh should stop taking drugs. If you're thinking so far that this month has been a light one, the Florida creatures were just saving their energy for February 6th. Not my fault the truck don't surf, muttered Jason Brush to the Volusia County Sheriffs. As he drove his Pearl Stallion through the tumultuous tides, the Dark Order stared in disbelief. Men could only dream of being this free. There's a cricket just landed on me. Unchained and unburdened as Jason was in this very moment. The beach was closed. He had no surfboard, no permission, and no right. But he did it anyways. He's like Sky King, but for people who nail driftwood to their wall. Meanwhile, a Central Florida mom was forced to drop her kids off across the street 
from school after concerns were raised about a OnlyFans sticker on the back of her car. The meme is real. It's happening. It's ha this is what everyone's always joked about. After being confronted about the sticker, the school like worded all of this very weirdly. Kind of like making this like a, we are so nice to your kids. Don't do this. Why are you doing this? Please stop sinning. I am so nice to your children. The Florida woman, <clears throat> the Florida woman's response was to allegedly place an even bigger OnlyFans sticker on her car. Just double or nothing. After this ungodly act, the school said, f*** it. And you goofy odd kids too. You've been promoted to drop out. They expelled them. They expelled the kids. This is a quote uh, from the school. If Klein removes the decal, takes down her OnlyFans account, and desires to seek repentance and restoration, school leadership said they could reconsider reinstating her children. That's funny. I personally am not Christian, but I also don't get bent over people's religious beliefs. Like a lot of people who say that they're not Christian. But this entire thing is very funny to me. Like this is like, that. this is amazing. This is so funny. It's just nonsense. Klein also claims that all the content on her OnlyFans page is with her husband. And there's a paywall and an ID required to even access it. So it's not like she's advertising to children. Ah! The, the entire situation is, uh, it's bonkers. Is it a sin? Please comment down below your thoughts and also the exact Bible verse where it says that you can't uh, have an OnlyFans. All right, February 7th. Psych! Still February 6th, the hot chocolate bandit. Oconee County deputies responded to a call about a suspicious man knocking on people's doors. On Oliver Bridge Road, February 6th, a fellow that night claimed that when he got home, his door was unlocked. Strange, but even stranger, someone had gone into his kitchen and made a cup of hot chocolate. Hmm, bizarre. A second resident that night entered his kitchen. He walked into it and he saw a man, barefoot, staring at him through the glass door. It was him, the hot chocolate bandit, using his low penetration ion beam eyes to skim through the cupboards looking for pre-made hot chocolate mix before entering and making his second cup of the night. The second resident, startled by the man, asked him kindly, leave, please, what the f are you doing? What? And what did he do? Just that. No incident, he left. The hot chocolate bandit cannot hurt you, will not hurt you. He is only there to make hot chocolate. Duh. The 44-year-old from Doral was arrested that night on uh, burglary charges. Burglaring hot chocolate mix, I guess. And closing out February 6th, a local Florida man, Alan Aspinwall, carjacked his grandma of 65 years old. The crazy unique thing about this entire situation is that he wrote her an apology note. Of course, we have that apology note, the handwritten version. And I have sat down and transcribed the entire thing and I'm going to read it front to back every word today for you guys, because it's not every day that we get to read an apology note from some guy who carjacked his f***ing grandma, okay? So if you don't want to listen to this entire apology note and you have some sort of like vehement hate for our grandmothers, skip to the timestamp that is right in front of me now and uh, you won't have to listen to me read this. But if you're, if you're a real Florida man, you're gonna wanna hear this. Dear grandma, first and foremost, you are the most beloved person in the whole world coming from me and everyone else. I want to apologize for not being the young man you raised, meaning that you raised a smart, intelligent, humble, and loving grandson, and took me in since birth. Legal custody. You are my everything. You're the most strongest person I know. I'm truly sorry for the negative events that have been going on in my life. My mind has been so in the gutter every day. I try not to think on purpose, but when I think, amazing things happen. Thank you for always forgiving me, even if I'm wrong. I just don't want to leave you all for no amount of time. I'm sorry for getting so off track, but God always steers the right way. I feel like I acted out without thinking, period. I would never hurt you on purpose or on accident. I love you with all my heart. It's time to close this chapter in my life. I'm crying now writing this. I'm a great person. I'm sorry I've been treating people not right as to their emotions. I'm so tired of going through re on sense. I'm way above it. I'm an entrepreneur. When I come home from prison, I promise I will. Page two. Be the great example of a loving father and loving grandson. Sometimes you have to hit rock bottom to understand and see. I can expect that. When I come home from you, you better be picking me up from release. I don't want to leave you or redacted or tinned, but I have to. To be able to be a better person, to be able to see more to life. I miss pops. I don't know what I would do without you. 
There's a lot of weight that I have supposed to be handling, but my head's so far gone now, I done took your time for granted. I wish I could hug you right now and tell you I'm sorry and everything's gonna be all right. I have to do this time so I won't be distracted. I have to be clear-minded so I can be at my greatest, so I can take care of you. I truly appreciate you for raising my son to be a gentleman that he is. Thank you. They're trying to give me more charges, but hopefully it won't affect the 17 months and now come to my sense is what I need to do to be able to terminate the probation. Whatever happens, God has my back and so does you. Tell Redacted I love her and that they are giving me another exposure charge at a Walmart, which they so-called had a warrant since December. But to get on top of it, I need her to talk to both countess that I'm on probation with to run the time concurrent with my sentence. Tell her to keep loving my son and spend time with him while I'm gone. Tell them to bond and love me and for them to help each other pass the time and to never forget me. Tell Tink I'm sorry and I don't believe the accusations that I was accusing her of was true. Tell her I need her to forgive me. Tink is the only person that can and will make me act without acting to set to her because I love her, she is my wife. I would be redacted up dead or in prison without her. She has nothing but the best intention for me and as to you, she is a great person. Grandma, do not turn your back on her. Take her in immediately. She will help you and redacted keep things in order. She will be in my life until death do us part. Please go to her immediately and y'all cope together. Page four. She has kept me on track for four years now. Grandma, she doesn't lie. Her mom is a horrible person. All she does is take and still can't stay there. We are all family. Y'all need each other while I'm gone. Please help her because she has helped me more than you will ever know. Just like you're my angel, she is my angel. Tell Redacted that his daddy was wrong. Tell him always respect his grandma. Tell him I said I want to be better than his daddy and since he's so smart, I'm giving him a task that he is more than enough time to handle. More. Yep, him and Uncle Redacted need to patch up that hole on the boat with fiberglass and he can paint it whatever color he wants. Tell him I believe in him and if you don't know how to do something, just ask and learn and ask and learn some more. Grandma, I love you. I'm be focused and able to fight off and quit my addictions. I'm doing this for pops. You, mom, Redacted, go pick up Redacted right now and both apologize to each other. Now y'all can focus because you know I'm actually better in lockup to straighten my life before it's too late. Treat my wife always like you treat me. I love you forever and always. Sincerely. Yeah. February 7th, 7th, finally, a magnitude four earthquake hit off the coast of Florida right next to my hometown in Brevard, County, which is hilarious. Further reminding you, keeping everyone in check, that Florida is not immune to any, any natural disasters at all. We get them all, baby. February 8th, a local Florida man's personal state mandated support kangaroo escaped and got stuck in an apartment pool enclosure. Basically, somebody called and was like, yo, I really wanna like swim, I'm at my apartment, but the kangaroo's here. Here's a picture of the little fella, he's adorable. He was returned to his owner without incident, and yes, he did have the proper paperwork, just a little kangaroo mishap. Is what they want you to think. The distraction worked. While the police were busy dealing with a kangaroo, another Florida man was making his way behind occupied territory to a place that many Floridians equate to the Western Front, a little place called California where his mission was simple. Steal an airplane, and 50-year-old Luis Gustavo did just that. Flying around California until eventually landing down on a beach and making his great escape. Flawless, what could go wrong? Executed perfectly. Except for the fact that usually when people see an airplane, like a private jet, I think it was, landing down on a beach, they're at least a little bit curious. Gustavo was yoinked and he's being charged for the theft of the airplane. Don't steal airplanes, but this one was kind of epic. Like, I think they only got him because of the eyewitnesses. I don't, I don't think they got him from any cameras or anything. I believe it was just because there was people on the beach when he landed and he probably got out and was like, oh, freaking bolted. February 9th brought us the proposal of House Bill 87 and the beginning of the Kill the Crack Bears movement. Florida House member Jason Schoaf said that this bill is not driven by personal disdain for bears, but uh, it is, and I quote, we are talking about the ones that are on 
crack and break down your door and are standing in your living room, growling, <laughs> tearing the house apart. But according to The Guardian, which by the way, um, actually, fact check, out of the 4,050 black bears native in Florida, none of them have been documented to ingest crack. Thanks, Guardian. This is a weird law since there's only like a reported, I think it's 2.2 encounters or altercations with native Florida bears in Florida a year since 2006. It's just a weird thing to get hung up on and I don't really understand where the uh, house representative guy, whatever, like where this came from. I understand why people were like, what? What are you talking about? I feel like he was at home, like any boomer watching the History Channel, and uh, he saw a segment on bears in Florida and was like, oh shit, you're telling me that we have bears here? Most people don't even know that. There is native Florida bears. He probably watched a segment and then was like, oh shit, and then went to Google and was like, does Florida have bears? Oh shit, Florida's got bears, I gotta shoot them. That's probably what happened, if I'm being honest. I can literally see it. February 12th. Yuri Andred, 31 years old of Florida, streaked in a pink mankini during the Super Bowl. Meanwhile, unbelievably, on a sports betting website, someone had betted $50,000 that this exact thing would happen at this exact time. Crazy coincidence. This resulted in them raking in a massive $375,000. That is unbelievable, huge. Who would have guessed that the man placing the bet and the man streaking were the same person? <laughs> A truly genius scheme that I can't believe that I haven't thought of sooner. And all he had to do was shut the f up. He would be swimming neck deep, 375,000 bones. That's like a two bedroom, one bathroom house from 2006 in Tampa. Straight balling, but no, he couldn't help himself. The first chance he got, he bragged about his scheme live in interviews. Like what? It was kind of a spur of the moment, a little bit of liquid courage and uh, adrenaline rush. You know, I felt like I was skydiving. All bets linked to Yuri are off. Pathetic. February 16th though, a Florida man is being accused of stabbing his friend with a samurai sword after a dispute of who gets to play on the Xbox. We've all been there. This absolute event happened in Daytona Beach and the 35 year old Shogun responsible apparently now is homeless. Police are flipping over every single box and opening up every single tent until they find him. And the streets are safe. At the very same time that the police are searching for the Daytona Samurai, Nicholas Taylor is causing a scene at a Wawa. And for those of you who are unfortunate enough to not know what a Wawa is, it's basically like a restaurant that's a gas station, that's a deli, that you can do heroin at. Nicholas Taylor saw somebody pull into the handicap spot without the handicap pass. His blood was boiling. Like Gandalf the Grey, Nicholas Taylor used his unwavering will and his physical body to block the car into the handicap spot. He was allegedly reeking of alcohol, by the way. The police arrived and Nicholas demanded the sheriff. I wanna see the big guy. Well, the officer said, actually, that's me. Hi, I'm the sheriff, I'm the big guy. Nicholas wasn't buying it. He used a simple little life hack that not a lot of people know about, and he called the police on the police, which is awesome. Fun fact, this forbidden tactic of uh, ancient knowledge will not work, but it will buy you more time while the police are distracted to drink the fireball cruisers in your pocket. So there's that. On February 17th, the man behind a massive turtle smuggling scheme has his hearing scheduled. John Kreisel has pleaded guilty to uh, uh, apparently trying to export thousands of turtles illegally. Is this good money? Are turtle stonks up? Where do I invest? In Minecraft, of course. Where would I invest in this? February 18th, Coral Springs Police Department. A lot of shit happens in Coral Springs, it seems like. Seems like a fun place. If you're from Coral Springs, please comment down below with your Coral Springs experience. Police respond to a disturbance at a local Target. A lot of fun things happen at Target, by the way. And this was one of them. A man was claiming to be Jesus. He then shit himself and tried to fight people. We've all been there. Hashtag free James Sweeney. February 20th, a Florida woman allegedly placed a bleach tablet in her boyfriend's tea claiming, whoops, tea I, I thought it was sugar, tea -hee. The man instantly felt that familiar spicy burn of bleach, that little tickle in the back of his throat. And in the most 4D chess move I could ever imagine, he looked at our perpetrator, 49 year old Yvette Diaz, and he offered her a sip of his tea. You, you want some? You want some? 
which then she completely refused to drink it. Hook, line, and sinker, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her. Just like that. Concrete shoebox, worst cup of tea ever made. February 21st, Florida man chops off paraplegic friend's feet with a hatchet and an insurance claim scheme thing. Yes, that's a real sentence that I just said. A man attempted to cash in an insurance check after a unfortunate accident with a bush hog, some of his farming equipment. A bush hog had allegedly chomped off both of his feet. No one could find them, they were lost. Literally, nobody could find the feet, even reporting medical and police staff, nobody. The feet were gone. The lawnmower ate him. Something was strange though, to Tori Thompson, one of the reporting officers to this incident. The man had two perfectly placed tourniquets on both of his severed limbs. Why is this weird, you ask? Let me show you why. This is a tourniquet. Farming accident, feet chopped off. It's already weird that he had two tourniquets on hand. What's even weirder is that while in shock, excuse my poor use of a tourniquet and me getting my dogs out, but this man was able to secure, put on said tourniquet and do it again. It's a little bit strange after having both your feet bit off by a freaking lawnmower. Ah! No bullying my tourniquet use. It's been a while since I've had to put one of these on a paraplegic guy who got his freaking feet eaten by a lawnmower. The whole situation was weird. Now, not only would that be incredibly hard to do, but the wounds were much too cleanly made, especially for having your feet bitten off by a freaking lawnmower. Let's just say Tori Thompson and the rest of the force quickly figured out the situation. The 60-year-old paraplegic man had done a phone a Florida man and called his friend up, chop off his feet. They figured it out. Okay, but is this a crime? What's losing a couple of pounds of flesh between friends? I, I don't know if it is. I cannot find a clear answer on this, but I do know that you cannot consent to having permanent bodily harm done to yourself, at least to the best of my knowledge, outside of like a medical or state mandated uh, setting, of course. Okay, from what I know, the police couldn't charge him with the feet lopping off. I don't think they had enough. They knew the situation, but how do they prove it? Well, what about that check that he cashed? The insurance scam check, right? We can get him on that. Surely we can get him on that. Yes, he did go and cash the check, but he never made an official insurance claim. The prosecutor had nothing. The police at this point are pissed, okay? They've spent way too many resources on this weird paraplegic guy who cut his feet off. They contemplated how can we pursue criminal charges. They entertained the idea of uh, charging him for filing a false police and EMS report, but from what I could find, they never did this. So I don't think he was ever charged with anything. Insane freaking story, I know. One question still remains, where are his feet? If the lawnmower didn't chomp them off, where did they go? Well, a relative soon after this incident found them in a, uh, in a bucket. They found his feet in a bucket in the pile of tires. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, also on February 21st, you can shoot the crack bears now, by the way, in case you're one of the people worried about that, you can, you can shoot the crack bears. February 24th, a Florida man is filmed via thermal camera doing it for the vine. Climbing a 5G tower so that he can do a video live stream. Trent DeGulis, 19, was booked for trespassing. Though the funny thing about this whole situation is that the cops actually asked Trent when they got him down, which by the way, he came down without incident. There was no, no one was harmed in this whole thing. Uh, just a bunch of people's times freaking wasted. The police asked him, officer was like, did you like actually make it to the top? Trent was like, yeah. And the police officer responded with, and I quote, that's pretty crazy. Also on February 24th, we have the first annual Florida Man Games, baby. Events such as beer belly wrestling, evading real police officers and running through people's backyards, stealing a bike from a bike rack, stealing a catalytic converter, and stealing a handful of copper pipes. Which by the way, copper is a secondary form of currency in Florida, for those of you who don't know. It sounds like an absolute hoot and a holler. You'll love to see it. February 26th, John Mandy, a 55-year-old Florida man from Boca Raton, is arrested for threatening to hunt down and kill the judges and prosecutors responsible for his previous stalking and domestic violence cases. Just all the people involved. The man took to Facebook like an absolute boomer, uh, stating that he was going to go down in a blaze of glory. Also comparing himself to the plight and troubles of Donald Trump and saying that people should join him in killing judges and prosecutors. It, Come on. Nice. Concrete shoebox. Bye. Also, Ariana Grande, that lady who f***ed SpongeBob, is also from Boca Raton. 
Some fun Florida lore there for you. Only someone from Florida would freak SpongeBob. We are almost done here, by the way. A Fort Myer man was accused of breaking into the Pagefield Airport and stealing an airplane. Again, two times in one month. He allegedly just went like plane to plane, seeing which one would start until eventually one did. Holy shit, Eureka, it's happening. And what did he do once that plane started? Well, he got behind the wheel and drove it straight into the nearest freaking pole that he could find. Nice. When the police arrived, nothing though was found inside the airplane except some blood and uh, empty bottles of Fireball. Though they did also find a tack rig with magazines inside of it and what they are referring to as a assault styled weapon. Who knows what that means? Knowing news, it could be a stick that painted black, but police were hot on his trail. Using the weird robot eye magic machine box thing, they found out that the man himself, was that, that he was Bruce Plummer. I don't know why he said it like that. That has no significance. It's just a random dude. 43 year old Bruce Plummer before his great heist went to a gas station and was videoed buying three shooters of Fireball and a Slim Jim. The combination of three shooters of Fireball with a Slim Jim, by the way, is entirely slept on. It's like nuclear fission for Florida men. It turns him into freaking Mr. Manhattan. Gives him a plus 50 to everything. A true witch's brew. February 29th, our final story for the month. Again, don't be sad that it's over, just be happy that it happened. A 33-year-old man was shopping at a Walmart in Sweetwater, Florida. Christina Arajo approached our protagonist and uh, asked him if he needed a ride. He entered her U-Haul truck to find that Christina was not alone. Marcella Asenjo Garcia was also in the truck. Now, the interesting thing about these three people is apparently they were roommates, and these two people in the car, well, they had a plan. Kinda. Not, not really. Christina started accusing the man of stealing her credit card. He denied it. He said, no, I didn't steal your credit card. He denied doing any such thing. Being that the situation was just instantly really, really weird, um, our victim here went to exit the U-Haul like, what the fuck is going on? Garcia punched him and dragged him back in, and the trio took off. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a kidnapping situation on our hands. A grown man napping situation, I think. The perpetrators grew hungry and decided to stop at a McDonald's. Our victim said, I need to use the potty and went in to use the bathroom where he secretly tried to call police. Christina was not having it. She chomped him like that. Boom, done. Attempt failed. Police not called. Holy frick, she just bit me. Allegedly. Luckily though, our main character was able to make contact with a McDonald's employee and did the blink three times for help. And uh, he was able to inform them, tip them off that, well, he was being held hostage. Christina and Garcia have both been charged with kidnapping. Christina has also been charged with uh, robbery by sudden snatching, battery burglary, dealing in stolen property, organized scheme to defraud, and petty theft. The two are currently being held without bond. And that's the story of how a McDonald's employee saved a Florida man who was kidnapped by a woman in Walmart. Yeah, that's the most sentence of all time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is February of 2024 in Florida. Comment down below your thoughts on all these happenings and cases. And uh, just real quick, my tablecloth, I don't know how long it's been franked up. Uh, just real quick, uh, thank you guys for always supporting me and showing so much love on the Florida Man series. It seriously means the world that you guys let me do so much random shit that uh, I enjoy. And uh, yeah, every single day I'm grateful for every single person that watches any of my videos from the bottom of my freaking heart. And I will continue to cover Florida monthly until it is inevitably sawn off the bottom of the United States and cast into the freaking ocean. Thank you guys so much. Also, I'm gonna keep covering months towards the end of the following month. The first Florida Man video, I actually filmed at the beginning of January, but it didn't make it out till the 24th. And I found that a lot of cases are developing, right? So if I film it, let's say I film this video March 1st, there's still things happening. Uh, in January, it was kind of hard to get any late submissions like towards the end of the month. Um, and a lot of things aren't even like posted about and spread through news um, until days after. Right. So we miss out on a lot of cases and a lot of details that might be interesting or funny. And uh, I think it's just better to release them the following month towards the end so that we can cover more things, have more interesting things to talk about. And there isn't things in cases that are inaccurate, you know, that could have been fixed, stuff like that. So again, thank you guys for everything that you do for me. And I will see you next time for Florida Monthly Review. I love you. Bye. Yeah.